last handouts. You guys, it seems like you might have already been starting to try to come up with versions of this on your own. Oh, yeah. So you might add to this. What we need is a synthetic toolbox that does retrosynthesis. That is, we need to know how to make all the different functional groups. We need to know how to make all the different functional groups here. For example, let's take a look at the bottom of page one. Let's take a look at the bottom of page one, because that was the idea that we needed in this case. At the bottom of page one, we needed to know how to synthesize a aldehyde or a ketone. How to synthesize an aldehyde or a ketone, and these are the two things that we have to be able to come up with out of our head. How to synthesize an aldehyde or a ketone, either an alcohol plus PCC or an alkene plus ozonolysis. Those are the two options we went over in our head, and then we chose the one that was appropriate here. And that's basically the way to do synthesis problems. You need to know what are the ways to synthesize all the functional groups. So most of the stuff here basically eventually has to be memorized if you want to have a good chance for the final. And just go through all the different uh, functional groups here and lists what are the ways you've learned to make functional groups. I prepared this for a class with a different instructor, so there might be reactions that you guys have done over that aren't in here. But I think almost all the reactions that are in here are reactions that you guys have covered. But you might need to add to this, uh, add to this as well for yourselves. Okay. Yes. When it's when like I started, I numbered it like I numbered it. I did four columns up to like mm -hmm. one, two. Mm -hmm. Which was that how it was? That's fine. You can remember these are not IUPAC numbers. They're just reference numbers. Yeah. These are just numbers. What was the purpose of the numbers? The purpose of the numbers is to help you identify carbons in one picture that are the same as carbons in a different picture. So it doesn't matter what you call this, as long as you give this carbon the same number as this one. In fact, if you wanted to, you could call this carbon Bob, and this one Alex. And then you would call this carbon Bob, and this one Alex. So the point is we're just giving names to the carbon so we can keep track of them. The exact numbers don't matter. And it's important to realize that these methyl groups are put in out here on purpose to help you name the carbons, and to see the carbons that are the same in the different pictures. So to answer your question, well, this is, question? Sorry, question. the question is, this is trigonal planar. Uh -huh. And we know that trigonal planar, we would normally expect the iodide can attack from either face. Yes. However, we know that it might not be able to attack from a face that's sterically hindered. And in the lecture notes, they said neither face is really sterically hindered. However, your point was it seems like the, this methyl group here is pointing out in front and blocking the front. Mm -hmm. well, there's two things away, so wouldn't it not be as a that, that's part of it, but that's not the main reason. That's, that's good thinking. But the main reason is, uh, this is something we've seen a couple of times today, being on, a being on a wedge is not intrinsic. This is really constantly rotating. Sometimes this is on a wedge, and sometimes this is on a dash. That's the main point right there. We happen to draw a picture where the methyl group was on a wedge. But a millisecond later, the methyl group is going to be on a dash. Yep. And that means that both faces, if they're hindered, are equally hindered. And there's no reason to favor one side over the other. But then, when you draw the answers, shouldn't one of them have the CH3 wedged and the X dashed like this? And then the other one had the CH3 dashed and the X wedged? Instead of the CH3 wedged on both? Let's see. Well, remember again, whether you're on a wedge or a dash is not intrinsic. So. Both of those pictures happen to be captured at the moment that the CH3 was on a wedge, but it could easily be on a dash. Let me show you what that looks like here. So this is going to give us So for example, here's one of the possible products. However, this is the same. Well, at that moment, shouldn't the CH3 be dash? Ah, well, you're not, when you're drawing your molecules, you're not trying to draw any particular confirmation. So you're not trying to draw what they look like the instant after the iodide comes in. Because a millisecond later, it's going to rotate away from that. We basically treat, if two molecules differ by rotation, we treat them as the same molecule. So you're not trying to draw what the confirmation will be the exact instant after the iodide attacks. So when would the, then when would sterically nerds get in your way? That is a good question. Okay, so let's try to clear that up.
So the first point I wanted to make again is whether this group is on a, on a wedge or not is not really intrinsic to the molecule. And this picture happens to be on a wedge, and then a millisecond later, it's here in the plane of the page, or maybe on the dash. So it, you, you can actually draw it either on a wedge or on a dash, whichever is convenient. They're constantly flipping around like fan blades. These are constantly whirling around like fan blades. So we wouldn't expect there to be uh, that much extra steric hindrance on any particular face, because the wedge is constantly going in different directions. And there's no, need, there's no need, again, to try to draw what the confirmation was the instant the iodide attacked. So we don't need to try to draw that the instant it attacked, it was coming in from a side that was not hindered. But you did answer a good question. How could any side then be hindered? Well, here's the answer. The reason that this methyl group is not really blocking the front is because there's free rotation. So that sometimes, even though in this picture we happen to draw the methyl in front, a millisecond later the methyl will be behind. But there's no free rotation in a ring. This is something we've seen every once in a while. Rings give you rigidity. We saw that in one of our very early sessions. Rings give you rigidity. There's free rotation around this single bond, but there's no rotation around this single bond. So in this picture, this methyl really is stuck on the wedge. This methyl is stuck on the wedge, and therefore it's constantly blo blocking the front face of this molecule. Generally speaking, I don't know if I would say that 100%, but yeah, by far the majority of cases where you have one face hindered is when you have a substituent on a ring, because otherwise it wouldn't constantly be just uh, blocking one face. If it wasn't in a ring, it would be, constant, it would be sh constantly shifting back and forth between two different faces. The main time when a substituent can block just one face is when it's on a ring. The other situations would be any other situation where you have rigidity, so something can't constantly rotate. I can't think of another good example, though, off the top of my head. So the vast majority of the time, if one face is sterically hindered, that's because the steric hindrance is on a ring and it can't rotate. So these are the two examples that you want to have in your notes. This is not really blocking the front face because it's free to rotate behind. But this is blocking the front face because it is not free to rotate behind. And the general theme is rings introduced rigidity. Rings introduced rigidity. You don't have as much rotation around bonds in a ring as you would in a straight chain. So in this case, we would mainly expect the iodide to come in on the dash. Where in this case, the iodides would be coming in both on the dash and on the witch. Okay. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box by the way i also offer tutoring via skype and you can find more information about that skype tutoring service at my website thanks